Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Boy, that was weird. It had a total shadow over the top for the moment, but now it cleared. So welcome to your Friday morning, early morning intuitive guidance. I'm Dr. Bonnie Nussbaum here with some words of wisdom for us to think about and help move us in a healthier direction. So, and this card very much is about health. So I think, oh, welcome to whomever just popped on. Joni Hill, good morning, good morning. Glad you're here. So good morning, Peggy, welcome. So health is going to be a piece of what we talk about today. Mind, body, and spirit. Sometimes we're really good at taking care of one aspect of our health. Maybe we're an exercise fanatic, but we're not so good at making that more well-rounded. What about caring for your, your mind and your spirit? Good morning, Cindy. Welcome. Glad good, glad you're here. Glad you're glad to be here, Peggy. That's awesome. Welcome, welcome. So we have three of you here for the moment. At least that's what my little counter says. We'll see how that goes. So let's all rub our hands together. And let's take a moment to send some good healing energy to our southern neighbors who are experiencing a whole lot of water whole lot of wind, a whole lot of all kinds of things, sending them good energy. <sighs> Breathing deeply and easily. <sighs> sending healing energy to areas where there's strife. I was up very early this morning because I'm going to be leaving to go to a retreat today. So tomorrow's Yemek will be from a different location. It's actually the retreat center that um, I did the uh, Yemigs from a while ago. So it'll be a familiar surrounding, but it might look a little different given that we're heading into autumn. Sending good energy anywhere there's conflict. Rubbing the hands together again, getting them all set to go. Sending energy and intention to anywhere you conceive of the need for healing. That can be physical healing, mental healing, emotional healing, social healing, spiritual healing. Sending good energy to all those who need it. Knowing that this energy is moving through you, not from you. So you're not depleting your own resources. You're merely the hollow reed through which the divine energy is flowing. We're kind of like the little... Uh, antennae that pick it up and move it around the world. One more time. Anywhere you'd like to send the energy. I'm just going to send it out broadly, trusting that it lands exactly where it needs to go. Awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Ruth Ann. Welcome. Glad you're here. So we again have the Power of Surrender deck by Judith Orloff. And actually today, I picked this deck on purpose to make my, my life a little easier because now I don't have to change all of the postings. I just have to change the title of what today's is. Good morning, Abigail. Glad you're here. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. So our card for today, getting ready to go to the airport. Yay! Heading this way. Awesome, awesome. Safe travels. Hopefully there aren't delays because of what's happening down south, but... Uh, We'll see how that goes. Good morning, Janine. Welcome, welcome. Here is our card. Surrender to rest and sleep. And I'm going to move her in a little bit. Look at the expression on her face. It's like she's settling in to soak up healing energy that comes with sleep and rest. So I'll read you the card, and then we're going to talk about some aspects of this. Good morning, Angie. Glad you're here. Welcome. We're up to seven of you and me makes eight. Thank you for the sunshine. Surrender to rest and sleep. So nice deep breath in. Let it go. Open to receiving this message. To prevent burnout. Good morning, Mel. Slow down. Slow down. Notice in your gut, did you have a reaction to me saying those words? Slow down. Often people do. When they're going Mach 3 with their hair on fire and someone suggests that they slow down, sometimes that really pokes the bear, creates irritability, creates a desire to lash back. Breathe, breathe. 
okay? There's a reason that it sets off that reaction in you. Be curious. Step into your curious observer for the moment and think to yourself, why might I react wanting to lash out when someone suggests that I slow down? What's going on in me that that pushes a button? Be curious, just be curious. Honor your need for quiet time and peaceful sleep to rejuvenate your mind, body, and spirit. Good morning, Carolyn, welcome, welcome. Honor your need for quiet time and peaceful sleep. How well do you do that? I am an aficionado of going to bed early and waking up early. That's just my jam. And sometimes I get a lot of people who will um, text me late in the day and th it's kind of like, I know you're probably already in bed. Yep, I probably am. Good morning, Gwen. Because I love to go to bed and I love to read and to take some time for some breath work and to just be and review the day, etc. For me, that's a pattern that sets me up to not burn out, to rejuvenate, etc. So way back when, when I was a 30-something and had little kids and was running a business, more than one business, had a gigantic house to take care of, was the soccer mom and just insane running back and forth. I remember, thank you, Cindy, I appreciate that. I remember reading about the concept of sharpen your saw. And I believe it was Stephen Covey. But let me share it with you because I think it will make some of the 10 of you who are here going, going, oh, oh, that makes total sense. But that's not what I do, but it makes total sense. So the gist behind sharpen the saw is if you have a forester who's out cutting wood, cutting trees, cutting trees, cutting trees, cutting trees, cutting trees, trying to get as much done as possible, cutting trees, cutting trees, the saw is getting duller and duller and duller. So more effort goes in with less results. Saying to that woodcutter, take some time and sharpen your saw. The wise woodcutter will do so, knowing that that seeming pause from the work actually then makes the work more productive. Just as rest and sleep make what comes next in our waking hours more productive. That pause, we, we have no qualms about stopping to fuel up our car, do we? Because we know if we keep going, we're gonna run out of gas. So we stop, we fuel the car, and we go again. Why do we not view ourselves the same way? Stop, fuel the body, whether it's with good food, whether it's with sleep, whether it's with enjoyment, whatever it is, rest, journaling, breath work, all the things we do that are good for us. Choosing to take the time to pause and do that. Yeah, I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'll suggest that you're going to be dead sooner because you did not sleep. <laughs> Good morning, Bonnie. Glad you're here. And when we are, be the woodcutter, right? So you haven't, good morning, Beth, haven't sharpened the saw. Does the work not become more arduous? It's harder to do the work. It can become less and less enjoyable because we haven't taken the time to sharpen the saw. So you pause, you sharpen the saw, you go back to cutting the trees, and it's easy work. It's much easier work than when your saw was dull and you had to pour more effort into it. And it was arduous, right? On some level, we know this. We know that this is logical and reasonable. But there's some part of us that wants to fight it. We've been so steeped. Yes, happy Friday to you too, and thank you for the sunrise. Beautiful. We're so steeped in that work, 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 work idea that despite how not wise that is, we get sucked in, we get sucked in. Let's let that go, let's let that go. I'm reading this amazing book, um, and, and Joe Edwards, and Cindy posted the, the um, information for it a couple of days ago. But she's talking about those cycles of life. And when you're in a particular cycle, when you embrace that cycle, how things flow, 
as opposed to fighting that cycle, etc. So when it's winter in your world, literal winter too, if you pretend like it's spring and you plant stuff, it ain't gonna grow, right? Winter is that fallow time. Winter is that that reparative time where we're supposed to rest and heal and prepare for the planting that comes with spring, right? Surrender to rest and sleep. This could be sitting and what my father would call wasting time. So you might just sit and be. <sighs> sit and notice your breath. Sit and scan your body from head to toe. What does it want you to know? Sit and listen to the birds. Diane and I went to the park yesterday. We met at the park and it was so pleasant, so pleasant. The water was still. There were people walking dogs through. Didn't get to see Mabel. She wasn't there yesterday, but at least not when we were there, but it was so pleasant just to sit there and it was warm, it was lovely. And there was shade, good morning, Trudy, welcome, welcome. Surrender to rest and sleep. So even right now, let's take a moment. There's 13 of you on here. Let's take a nice deep breath in together and let it go. What do you notice with that one breath? I noticed my shoulders drop. What do you notice with that one breath? That is surrendering to rest and sleep. S surrendering to what is. Surrendering to where your body is. Good evening to you. Yes, yes. We have some people for whom it is morning. We have other people down under, etc. For whom it is evening. Yes, yes, yes. And notice, again, we accommodate where we're at and what we need at that point in time. In the evening, most people begin to wind down. In the morning, most people begin to open up. A flow, being in that flow. Same thing with deep work. He talks a lot about how do we pay attention to what's most important. That, that including that fallow time to just be and let ideas roll around your head. I was on a meeting yesterday that was like information from the fire hose, listening to the rain falling. Beautiful, beautiful. And so I took the notes I could take and knowing me, I decided I was going to type up those notes and send them to the people who needed them right away so that my brain was still present in that information rather than allowing myself to get distracted by the next two meetings I had, meeting the, the task at the moment, tuning out the other things that were wanting to impinge. The information came through much better that way then if I was like, okay, so I'm gonna prepare for this other meeting and I'm gonna take finish the notes on this meeting and then I'm gonna, oh, I gotta, I gotta do this. No, 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 no. Our brains can really only hold on to one or two things at a time. When we start adding in three, four, five things, we like to think we multitask really well. Uh-uh, we lose it on all, of, we aren't doing paying good service to any of those tasks when we do that better to put them in order. And when you find it's, I'm going to tell you my pattern, when it's the end of the day and it's meeting number five and I'm toast, I know I'm, I've lived long enough, made enough laps around the, yes, doing less, but doing what you do better. I've made enough laps around the sun that I realize if I'm trying to accomplish something and it just isn't happening because I am done, I'm cooked, surrender to rest and sleep. Once I've slept and I get back up, I can do that and more well. Again, sharpen the saw. It does not pay to keep hammering away at something. I was never a study all night person. There's a point of diminishing returns. So I would study, 
I would go to bed, get up in the morning, might look at it again and go take the damn test and do well, do well. Trying to cram in last little bits of information, staying up, pulling an all-nighter, not smart, not smart. It's kind of held up as the way you have to do things, but it's garbage. Good morning, Linda. Welcome, welcome. We are at lucky number 13. This is cool. Take good care of yourself. Do not be a maniac. Give up the tearing around Mach 3 with your hair on fire. Surrender to rest and sleep. Create balance in your life. Take good care of your body vessel. It's what moves you around the earth plane. If you mistreat it, and how many of us have done that in the past, if you mistreat it, it's not going to last as long as if you take better care of it. So right now, what do you do to take good care of yourself? I've just added a vitamin, calcium, into my regimen. Why? Because my dad has spinal stenosis, my sister has spinal stenosis. I don't want to get there. What am I going to do? I need some weight-bearing exercise, and I need some calcium, and I need some vitamin D to help the calcium absorb, and I need to spend time in the sun, and I need blah, blah, blah. You get the drift, right? What are you doing for you these days? Put it out there. What are you doing? You're here. That's an awesome step. That's a self-care kind of thing, right? Every day we have some things we think about, we feel into, we work on, we ponder, we surrender to rest and sleep, all this good stuff, right? So my wish for you today is practice the slowdown. Practice the quiet time. Take a pause. Whenever you notice the opportunity, take the pause. It might be you're at a stoplight. Pause. Breathe. It might be you're waiting for a doctor appointment. Get called into the, the office. Pause. Breathe. Take advantage of all the opportunities that you have to be fully present right here, right now. Rest a bit in the afternoon. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. Yes. Take in nature. Nature is a great way to slow ourselves down. So that is your mission for today, should you choose to accept it. We'll see you again tomorrow from a different location, and have a good day. Remember, you are capable of far more than you think you are. Bye-bye.